Hey everyone, this is John from US Dash Camera. Today got a review on the Ordro Q505W Wi-Fi Dash Camera. Now this is a pretty affordable and compact dash camera with decent specs. It sports an A7LA55 chipset, which allows it to record at 1296p at 30 frames per second. And while it doesn't have built-in GPS, it does have a GPS input. Now there's a couple standout features about this camera that really impressed me and that's the Wi-Fi and the fact that you can actually use this as a wireless IP surveillance camera over the internet. So while you can actually view a live video feed from anywhere over the internet, there are some limitations to that and I'll get to that later. But if you want to pause here and read all the specifications of the camera, this is from GearBest.com who was kind enough to send me this camera for review. Besides those features, it comes with a standard set of features we expect any dash camera to have in 2015. So let's go ahead and look in the box. So I had never actually heard of this brand before. They have some pretty interesting packaging with that guy on the front with a pretty flashy jacket. But as you can see, it's all in Chinese for the most part. So this is likely a company that is more prominent in China. So when you slide open the box, the presentation is pretty nice. It reminds me of an iPhone box actually when you open it. So as I said, it's very small, very compact, it feels sturdy, and it feels like high quality too. So there's an included manual that does have English in it. As usual, I'm not going to actually go through that. What's interesting is it came with stickers for the serial number, so I guess if you need some spare serial number stickers, they are included. Now here's the actual mount, which I'm not a big fan of because it is just a pretty generic tripod style suction cup mount. But what's different about this camera is it does have this little piece that attaches to it, and that actually slides into the camera. So you don't actually screw the mount directly into the camera, and it makes it very easy to remove. So it comes with a lanyard also and a second slide on mount so you could actually use it sort of like a wrist strap because it does have a sport or action camera mode also which isn't very common for most dash cameras besides the Mobius and Inov cameras. So here's the little piece that screws onto the mount. It's pretty small there you can see that's where it slides onto the camera on one side. It sort of looks like the clip-on style of the G1W or a lot of other cameras, but it actually slides in very smooth, but at the same time it feels secure. So here's just a USB adapter. It uses a standard micro USB cable to power it. And this does use a battery, so there's no capacitor in this. I know that is a very important feature for some people, but since it can be an action camera also, a battery is pretty important. So let's get this all out of the way and we'll take a look at the actual camera. So I really like the quality of it. I'm not a fan of how shiny it is, but it does still look very high quality and feels sturdy also. For a second I thought that could actually turn, but it doesn't. So we have uh, HDMI output, GPS input on the side, on the top that's where it's, the mount slides in, micro USB and micro SD card. On the back we got a 2.7 inch LCD with a couple of menu buttons, record and uh, emergency record mode. So let's get this mount on because this is pretty unique and I really like this. I'm not a fan of this suction cup mount, but I really like the way this slides on. So it slides on only one direction and it hits this point where there's more resistance. So it doesn't slide on super loose. Once it hits that point it does feel tight, but at the same time it's not hard to take it off. So I really like this design. Now compared to a G1W, you can tell it is significantly smaller, and if 
you haven't seen my other G1W videos, I did obviously modify my G1W. I spray painted it black and added a CPL or circular polarized lens on the front. So I'll provide links down below if you're interested to see how I did that. A CPL just reduces glare or reflections in the window. But yeah, overall it is a very small camera. The G1W itself is pretty small. So here we got another mount. Now this mount I bought off eBay. They're pretty pricey, but if you bought this, it would be a lot easier to make this camera a lot less noticeable in your car. And you could also stick it to the black dotted area behind your rear view mirror if your car has that. So I would highly recommend getting one of these if you can. They are a little pricey at about eight US dollars on eBay, but that's the only place I've been able to find them. So just search for this small mount car D DVR mount holder or something like one piece and you should be able to find it. So let's go ahead and plug it in and look through the menu. Now the menu I wasn't a big fan of. It's very, very simple and it's a little strange because you can only go through the menu one way. So I gotta get a memory card in first. So the top button is the menu button. The first option will let you watch your videos and when you select it, it'll actually ask if you want to watch your sport action camera videos or your dash cam videos. And the second option lets you switch between those two modes. So here you can see the bottom button acts as a select button. So when I select Wi-Fi, it turns it on. So you can see the record button acts as a forward button. I didn't set up the access point yet, which I need the app for, which I will show later. We got the voice record on or off, which is just if you want it to be muted by default. Auto record on or off. Screen saver on or off. And then the settings, we have format or factory reset. And that's actually everything in the menu. Now you might have noticed that there was no option to change from 1080p to 1296p. That's something else that requires the app. So you will have to download the app to set up the internet features and to change it to 1296p if you would like to record at that higher frame rate. Overall, I think it's compact enough where if you get a good mount for it or if you can install it behind your mirror, it is very well hidden and it's not too flashy. So I think it's a pretty nice design. Before we get into that Wi-Fi app, let's go ahead and look at some footage. Now this is just going to be 1080p. YouTube doesn't ever seem to want to upload 1296p footage. It will allow 1440p, but if I upload the 1296p, it just downsizes it to 1080p anyways. But overall, I was pretty happy with the quality of this camera. I think more and more cameras are getting really good quality at such cheap prices that I'm really anticipating more 1440p or hopefully in a year or within a year we'll maybe start seeing 4k dash cameras but it's not very likely either way at the current rate a lot of these more affordable cameras have very high quality 1080p footage I would like to see 1080p 60 at least but so far that hasn't really been a feature in any dash cameras I've used so this camera does claim to have a 170 degree wide angle view. So as you can actually see here a little bit, there is a little bit of fish eye on the sides, but I was actually surprised it didn't look worse. At 170 degrees, that's really high and makes me wonder if that's actually not true. I'm not an expert on field of view, so I can't really say for sure. But overall, if this is 170 degrees, it's not too wide to me. But like I said, I it almost seems like that's not actually true how wide it is. I was pretty impressed by the color in this video. Obviously it's a really nice day when I film this, but it does seem like a lot of cheaper cameras have really washed out colors. That's more anecdotal though, I can't say for sure because I'm not always able to f film with every camera in every condition like this. But it is something I thought I would point out because it did look really nice. In 1.9 miles, take a 
seems to handle light to dark or dark to light transitions fairly well too. As you can see going into the tunnel it didn't stay really dark or anything at first. Of course there are some lights in there but I've had some cameras where even with the lights it's really dark for a couple seconds. And then again coming out it would be really bright for a few seconds but this camera does fairly well in these conditions. And as you can probably hear the audio is adequate. It's nothing special but it gets the job done and I always recommend to record audio just in case you might hear those tires screeching or something before an accident. Now the night footage is equally impressive. It's nothing mind-blowing but for a really cheap camera, a really affordable camera I should say, with some pretty unique features I thought the video quality was pretty good at night. As you can see I can read all the stop signs or excuse me the street signs. You can see clearly all of the lights aren't adding too much bloom or anything to the picture. Everything just looks well defined. I always point out that on some cheaper cameras, even on this stretch of highway, my headlights don't even show up sometimes. I've mentioned in past videos I was considering getting brighter headlights, but honestly I think the issue was the cameras just had really poor night quality. and. A decent camera with decent night quality recording shouldn't have an issue with any regular headlights. Now on especially dark roads it still does fairly well. You can see my headlights light up the road quite a bit in front of me. It is really dark but that's pretty much expected when there's so few street lights on a road like this. Overall I couldn't knock it against it or anything because this is pretty standard I would say. I would expect it to at least look this good. It's not the best I've seen but it's definitely better than a lot of the hundred dollar cameras I've used in the past. So I just wanted to touch on the app a little bit. I don't have a second device to record it in action so I just have screenshots but you can see you can change the resolution and any of the other options that were in the cameras menu. This is also where you would set up the internet settings. So there definitely are a couple more options in here like the motion and impact sensor so you really should download the app. Now my biggest issue with the Wi-Fi though is you can't actually record while you're using it. And that's a pretty important feature on something like the Blackview cameras where you can use the Wi-Fi and you're still recording. Now once you connect to the camera with the app over Wi-Fi as you can see there is an actual record button so you can start recording but it's not like it's constantly recording as you're accessing the Wi-Fi feature. Another thing is the cloud feature where you can access it over the internet is pretty much the same thing where it's not going to be recording while that feature's on. You can actually access it and then start recording I would assume but I was never actually able to get onto it over the internet so what would happen is it would load and load and load and then eventually it would stop loading but no picture would ever show up but it would show that timer suggesting that it's connected but for whatever reason it wasn't sending a signal and in the past with a similar device I've actually been told to use an Android device but either way I didn't have an Android device at the time and I still don't so it's not something I can do currently and unfortunately I wasn't able to test the cloud mode The manual does say though that while the Wi-Fi is activated you can't be recording in the dash cam mode so you can't assume it's going to be like a security camera where it's always recording and you can just access it and view live feeds while it's recording. And this is actually the gray screen I got when it's supposedly connected to it over the internet so I'm not sure what the issue is. Overall I do like the camera as a dash camera. I like the form factor, I like the design, it's very small and compact with a small screen and I think it's pretty affordable too at about $114 currently on GearBest.com and I'll provide a link down below to their store. But I couldn't help being a little disappointed with the Wi-Fi because it didn't really offer all of the functionality that I really want in a Wi-Fi mode for a dash camera. 
but I can't really expect too much when it's only $114 where my Blackview cameras were over $300. My DR650 2 channel was actually over $400 when I bought it. So this is really affordable and I can't always expect the best. So if you're interested in this camera, don't expect it to be the most full featured Wi-Fi mode. Now I also didn't touch on the action camera mode in the review, but I just w would like to point out that while it could make a really decent action camera, there is no waterproof case for it, and that's obviously a very important feature for action cameras, so I would take that into consideration. So while it does make a decent quality dash camera, the action camera mode and the Wi-Fi is just adequate, but for $114, the video quality alone and a few extra unique features I think are pretty worth it. One last thing I wasn't able to show on video was if you connect to it over the Wi-Fi or the internet, you can actually talk through your phone to the camera and the camera speakers will actually play your audio. So you could live chat to someone basically. And while the audio wasn't very great, it was a pretty cool novelty. I think we're going to see this in other dash cameras coming soon in the future, likely with higher quality, but again, they're going to be more expensive. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review. As usual, if you like this video or my other videos, I'd appreciate it if you hit like and subscribe. Now I do have that contest going for the free Papago dash camera, and there's only about 10 people entered, which is sort of funny because a lot of people have liked my ad on Facebook, but either way, your odds are really good. So check out that other video, like, subscribe, and comment down below. So as usual, drive safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.